Hello, I'd like to make a uh, simple uh, video on field theory that uh, hopefully even a 12-year-old child could understand. Now, instead of looking at this as a circle, just think it as an infinite point of, uh, of, uh, without uh, spatial volume. And if we look at it this way, we're, e we're more easily able to understand that. We think of this as an indivisible line that actually has no extension. We're talking about unmanifest inertia, or what uh, quantum... Uh, mechanics and general relativity and their insanity have called dark matter or quantum fluid which is just nothing other than a euphemism for what Tesla, Heaviside, Steinmetz, Faraday and all the greats of electrical theory that gave us 100 percent of our current electrical grid and system. Einstein gave us nothing of that. Nothing. Okay, He invented nothing, he discovered nothing, and um, his quote-unquote theory of relativity is mostly stolen from Henri Pon Henri Poincaré. Excuse me, my French is not so great. Henri Poincaré. I'm sure I'm still pronouncing that wrong. Anyway, as so far as field theory, we only have, uh, we have uh, two field modalities and we have one field. There is only one field. Now we think in terms of electrostatics, like di dielectricity, we think in terms of magnetic field, electrical, and then we think of gravitational field. But ultimately, I hope to make this really fast and simple for you to understand it, that there's only one field, and there's a loss of that field as expressed by magnetism, i.e. the loss of inertia, because there's only two principles that use rule the entire universe. Force in motion and inertia and acceleration. Well, how do you tie all four of them together rationally? Now, actually, let me show you this. Now, as you've seen underneath the ferro cell, a magnet, doesn't matter what shape it is, looks exactly like this. It looks like a, a torus. It looks like a, a reciprocal, well, of course, most people can't visualize that. I can, a reciprocating processional hyperboloid, which sounds complicated, but is divinely simplex. Now, you see this spirograph-like hypertrochoidal pattern. If you're able to get it underneath the camera better, I'll show it to you in a slightly uncompressed fashion. There you go. You actually see a torus, a toroid a spirograph, a hypertrochoid. That's the expression of the loss of inertia. Now, as Faraday called magnetism, he called it the dielectric field. But what does that mean specifically? It means that the necessitated loss of inertia, i.e. the ether, must be expressed as the creation of space and of course the posterior attribute of the creation of space is a measure of movements of magnitude which we call time but of course time does not exist time is a human contrivance um, here we have dielectricity with absolutely no manifestation as a linear propagation now we think of a single point i.e. the ether as being unmanifest a longitudinal propagation such as found in electromagnetism i.e. radio or regular light obviously has a longitudinal pulse between each waveform of the, electricity, the electrical uh, value and the magnetic value of the waveform of the transverse electromagnetism. Now here we have electricity, which by the way is phi times psi q and Planck electrification. Electricity is nothing other than the hybrid of electricity and magnetism operating together, which is found in obviously frequency and amplitude, constantly pulsing back and forth like this. Well, what frequency? What amplitude? Obviously, we have the entire EM spectrum and we have electricity. So electricity is a hybrid of dielectricity and of magnetism, operating at a frequency and an amplitude, obviously so. Now, in the case of, uh, to make this really simple so that a child could understand, like electromagnet that pulls up cars, obviously an enormous amount of, uh, of voltage is actually dropped to uh, the uh, to the lifter, like the lifter magnet that picks up dead cars and re-scraps out things. Now, electricity doesn't terminate as magnetism, or doesn't terminate into magnetism by dumping that charge and creating a large electromagnet. It loses its dielectric component. So electricity terminates not into magnetism is wrongly thought, but as magnetism by losing its dielectric component. In other words, all that electricity that is actually brought through electromagnet to lift up dead cars so they could be scrapped is nothing other than the loss of the dielectric component of electricity, which means you have an extremely high Gauss field that is able to pick up multi-ton multi uh, cars with that electromagnet. It is that electricity terminates as magnetism by losing its dielectric component not into magnetism but as magnetism because electricity is the hybrid of 
dielectricity and magnetism. Phi times psi equals cube, Planck, and electrification. Electricity, by definition, denotatively, is the combination of two things, dielectricity and magnetism. So by losing its dielectric component, the electricity manifests itself in the electromagnet, for example, as a huge, enormous, very powerful, high Gauss magnetic field. Now, where does gravity come into play? Well, we think gravity is something different. Now, we know in, in uh, galactic jets, we see enormous amounts of shooting matter shooting out uh, billions of light years at either, either end of galactic jets. Now, the necessary loss of inertia, which manifests itself as longitudinal dielectricity, is an equation. It's 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3, which some people would think would be a number, but it's actually an expression. And that expression, if we were to think of this as a zero point, which is invisible rather than seeing the circle, that equation necessitates the expression, which we know that the attributional nature of the ether expresses itself as longitudinal dielectricity by that equation that I discovered 12 years ago. So where does gravity come into play? Gravity, like electricity, is nothing other than a hybrid. So what is gravity? Well, we talk about what denotes gravity. We're talking about mass, i.e. matter. Matter is nothing more than a dielectric condensate. Okay, it's like taking carbon dioxide and freezing it to its solid state. Now, obviously, that is a huge hyperbole, and this is a supreme oversimplification, but this is matter. Okay, obviously, extremely simplex. Let's just think of this as uh, the hydrogen atom. Even that is too simple, obviously, this model, of course. But we have, as, of course, modern science likes to say, well, 99.99999% of an atom is empty space. That's not true. This supposed empty space in here in an atom is a magnetodielectricity. And what we think are electron atoms... Now, by the way, Tesla, Heaviside, Steinmetz, Faraday, on and on, even the discoverer, J.J. Thompson, of the quote-unquote electron, denied for a long time that the electron is a particle. There's absolutely no such thing as an electron particle. And email me if you want a huge list of uh, logical reasoning behind this. But the premise that we have that, that wires are like uh, huge rain sticks that little uh, electron atoms are pouring through, to, uh, Oliver uh, Heaviside called this, uh, called this uh, I think he called it a mind virus. Uh, Eric Dollard called it the same thing. Uh, Tesla, on two different occasions, said that the notion that the electron was a particle w was absolutely absurd. So everybody that gave you 100% of our current electrical grid, these people weren't stupid, by the way, um, but everything now is based upon Greek atomism. That's all general relativity and quantum mechanics are, is nothing than, other than atomism. If you don't know what atomism is, then I suggest you look it up. It basically means that the whole universe is just a giant bag of magical, unseen particles rolling around like BBs and um, volleyballs, you know, they're bumping into each other. And, uh, of course, they've never defined a field. Never. They never will define a field because fields are particle-free. We'll never define instantaneous action at a distance, such as EPR. Look up EPR paradox. But we know that it exists. Um, see, faster than light travel, instantaneous action at a distance contradicts the entire premise of general relativity and quantum mechanics, and so does the denotation of the term field, which has never been explained, never been defined. Human understanding is uh, still in the Stone Age, as we think are so advanced with our computers and our TV sets, but, but ultimately we're pretty stupid. So, ultimately, let's look again. Remember back to the feral cell. I said, you see this again? This toroidal form that you see underneath the feral cell? That's magnetism, as painted by light. Tim Vanderelli's wonderful invention. So, you could think of this as a zero-point ether pressure that has been released, longitudinal, the expression of that form in transverse, reciprocating processional hyperboloid is magnetism. We have ultimately only one field, dielectricity. We have the loss of that field's potential, just like releasing charge on a battery, for example. And the release of that field, i.e. inertia, i.e. dielectricity, is force in motion. Okay, 100% of the visible universe is this is magnetism. Okay, the entire atomic structure of an atom in picometers, as it measured in picometers, is due to magnetism, not dielectricity. So we have one field, one release of that field's potential, i.e. the loss of that inertia, as expressed in force and motion, and we have two field modalities, one being electricity, okay, 
frequency and amplitude, and the other one being gravity, which is a dielectric condensate. We have a nucleus, okay? Right here we have tons of magnetodielectric space created. Okay, space is not a thing. Space is neither a field nor a force. Space acts on nothing. Space does nothing. This is the ultimate brain virus and huge flaw that Tesla says over and over again, as well as others of general relativity, is reified space as something that does something. It's like saying a shadow has done something or a, you know, a shadow is the absence of something. Okay, the absence of inertia. Let's just consider the central point here, which is not a point. It's even prior to a point. That the loss of that inertia is expressed in force and motion leaves behind it a wake that us humans and our stupidity, all of us, call space. Okay, we live in it, we breathe in it because we're all existential beings, but that space is neither a field nor a force. It does nothing and it acts on nothing. So here we have a dielectric condensate we call mass or matter in its most simplex form, obviously. An oversimplification to be sure with this model, which is a Toro Flux, by the way. This cute little toy is called a Toro Flux. Um, it's a neat little device that every little child should have that gets them thinking in multi-dimensional geometric fashions. Um, so, that's the irreducible simplicity of the universe. Um, I have to stick fast to this and say that it's absolutely irrefutable. As far as a grand unified theory, I mean, it's already been discovered. Whether anybody accepts it or not, you know, it doesn't make any difference to me. You know, I'm just happy to understand it. But we only have one field, that's dielectricity, i.e. the ether, expressed longitudinally. That's the longitudinal pulse found within transverse electromagnetism. We have the loss of that inertia, the loss of that acceleration, as expressed by force and motion. Now, as I told you in prior videos, there's a huge difference, especially in field theory, between acceleration and motion. And increasing acceleration in terms of gravity, for example, which is an acceleration towards dielectric voidance, Okay? Gravity is nothing other than dielectricity. Gravity is no different than turning on your TV set and actually shining a light off from the side and seeing the little dust particles actually head to the TV set and stick to the TV set. That's why you're running your TV set, especially the little CRT tubes, got so dusty. The dust in the air would go <whistles> gravitate to the front of the TV. That is the exact same thing as gravity. People think that that is an electrostatic charge. Or like you charge a balloon up and you pull someone's hair to it. That same acceleration, not force, that same acceleration is what we ignorantly call gravity. Gravity itself is an autonomous acceleration, of which a lot of people call it in incorrectly a force, does not exist. It's like, what do you mean gravity doesn't exist? All of a sudden you drop this and there's gravity. And what I mean specifically is that gravity does not exist. It is not an autonomous force. It's definitely not a force, which, of course, even the idiots of general relativity and quantum mechanics will admit to. They call it an acceleration. But an acceleration of what? By what? We need explanations, not descriptions. And all that general relativity and quantum mechanics provides are descriptions, not explanations. It is a dielectric acceleration. It's dielectric avoidance. Okay, it is the loss of force in motion because there are no straight lines in the universe. What we think are straight lines in the universe are infinitely slightly curved. There are no, there's not a single straight line anywhere in the universe. None, nowhere, ever, never. It doesn't exist. So, hope I made that very simple. We have one field. We have the loss of that field expressed as force and motion, and we have two field modalities. One expressed as a dielectric condensate, which we call matter, mass, okay? And the other one, which is expressed by longitudinal transverse force and motion, transverse electromagnetism expressed in frequency and amplitude, what we call electricity. So dielectricity, electrostatics, electricity, magnetism, and quote-unquote gravity are one thing only. It's our only pathetic human understanding of the nature of the universe that we think these are four separate things. Really, they're just one thing. They're a hydra, a single beast with four heads, if you want to talk about it that way. Thanks for watching.